was very much like this one in November 2007. Kalayan Community Ministry started. And I must say it wasn't the best day of my life. It was a wee bit uh, dark and gloomy. And there's children playing. Like you can see a lot of them are starving and people are sick. Um, but that's where we saw hope. Within the, within the community, there are people, there are children smiling and playing. And uh, my wife, Joanna, she saw them just playing about in the, in the muck. And she said, you know, why don't we just start um, singing with them and tell them Bible stories. And I said, that, that's, that's a good idea. I'll, I'll translate for you. And uh, that was the first day of the Sunday school. There was only about a handful of them, and that was only 10 of them. And 10 became 20, and 20 became 50. And then uh, a couple of months later, there was uh, 200 of them. And it's really a faith journey. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't plan on starting a church, but eventually, uh, before our six months uh, missionary volunteerism finished, we, we thought, we, we can't go back to the UK. We need to stay here. And that was eight, eight years ago. And we are still here. I remember one day we were doing arts and crafts, me and Joanna, and we have this big tub of uh, glue. And one of the boys said, can I have some milk? And they thought it was milk. They want, they want to drink milk, and they said because they were hungry. And then that's when we realized, you know, we should bring some kind of, uh, like even just crackers, because we didn't have much money at the time. I remember we only planned for six months to stay in this ministry, so we don't have much money. So we brought some crackers, and uh, like I said, what, what are those tub of crackers that you use for, for the funeral? Because it was cheap. But um, you know, it started from there, and sometimes we had to cut it in half because there's not enough. But you know, the kids were so happy with that. And you know, the, the crackers became like noodles and congee, and it became rice and meat. You know, now we're able to feed children with, with fruits and vegetables and clean water and rice and meat. And, you know, it's amazing. It, it, um, you know, you, you really need to trust God with what you have. You know, it doesn't how, matter how small it is. But um, now we, we feed uh, children like 2,000 every week. Uh, it's really amazing. Kalayatan means freedom. Kalayatan Community Ministries is based here in Tondo, Manila. It's the biggest slum area in Manila and the second biggest dump site in Manila. We have various uh, programs and ministries going on. We planted a church here right in the middle of the community. All the other programs uh, grew from that. We have feeding programs, college and university scholarship, 
Um, we have Micro Enterprise helping families set up businesses. We have children in youth work, uh, community outreaches, training of um, leaders from within the community so that it can be run by the community. When we first came here, our intention was to stay here for six months, absolute maximum, and then return to our proper jobs back in the UK. Um, but we came here and we just really fell in love with the community. We started off volunteering with a school, really great organisation. They, they ended up moving to a different location. We felt in our hearts we were supposed to stay here, located in the heart of the community. food in this community is called pagpag. Pag. Pagpag pag in Filipino means to shake the dirt or shake the dust or maggots from um, and pagpag pag is food that's recycled. Um, it's waste food that comes from um, fast food chains. It's brought here in dump trucks and the papas and mamas search through it to try and find um, meat still on the bone. They take that meat and they reboil it and they recook it to try and get as much of the germs out as possible and um, they either then would eat that their, for their families or they resell it on and they can buy a whole bag for about 20 pesos. So a whole bag of waste uh, pag pags feeds their whole family and that's what the majority of the families were living on before the feeding programmes. So at the moment the team are running two types of feeding programmes. One feeding programme is general for anybody that wants to come and eat within the ages of 4 to 19 years old and even the adults they can come and eat, just anyone who's hungry. The other uh, type of feeding programme is more specific, it's called Lelagot which means thrive to thrive and it's for the children who are the most undernourished, malnourished in the community. They come in and they eat breakfast in the morning, they eat lunch, they, they are dewormed and all their medical needs are taken care of and that's the two types of feeding programme that we currently have. Um, for the general programmes, they run four days a week and they cost about 5,000 pesos per session which feeds 250 to 300 children and that gives them rice, meat, vegetables, a piece of fruit and clean drinking water and bread. Um, the Lala got, which is the Thrive, that costs £15 a month per child. Part of what the ministry does is um, help families with uh, medical emergencies, so um, helping provide for medicines or doctor's appointments or hospital fees or births sometimes. The reality is the mamas and the papas in this community work so hard, they're hard working men and women, and, but they're earning very little so they would pr prioritise what they earn on food rather than medicine. Um, they might have one child sick but they have to feed maybe five so the money would go on food. So our team um, offer assistance for just emergencies, not like coughs and colds and things like that, but um, those children who really need help. Um, and what the parents do is they have to bring their receipt from the hospital or from the doctors, and then we will, one of our team will go, go with them and pay or go and buy the medicines for the families.
There are very many capable young people in this community, teenagers who um, had dreams about going outside the community and getting work. But what we found when we came here was with these um, very capable and able young people going to um, interviews outside the community and just based on where they live, they couldn't get a job. Even if they had finished high school, nobody would employ them because of their address because they came from Tondo dump site or Novota Cemetery area. Um, so a few years back, about four years ago, we began a scholarship programme just um, college and university scholarship program so we um, take on young people and help them through college and university and um, we cover their daily needs of their transport, their lunch money, um, their tuition fees, their uniforms, their books. We really have to cover everything um, for them to make it through especially an academic course which is four years and we're starting to see the fruit of that now which is such a blessing we're starting to see them graduate from that and get in jobs because they've come through college and university so now when they go for an interview they see their um, address that they're from D Tondo uh, dump site or Novota Cemetery but they see that they've graduated from private colleges and universities and they're able to get the jobs. I hope that you can see some of the joy and some of the hope and some of the love that is here. Sometimes when people come, they just see the negative, they just see the poverty, they just see the gangs or the violence. But that's not all this community is and we pray and we hope that you would see um, the goodness that is here too. Um, since we came here, it's an absolute privilege for my husband and I and for the team um, to, to be based here in this place. We love the families, they teach us so much. It's not just us teaching them, we learn a lot from them because their team is made up from the community. They have a lot of the solutions and they're not looking for handouts, they just need some support. And they just need some support for the dignity that they deserve in their life. Any goodness, any success that is happening here, even in the small scale that it is, we believe that comes from Christ. We believe that it comes from God.